The images from the James Webb Space Telescope have been nothing short of spectacular. Every image tells a unique story about some corner of the universe. But there's another story as to how the images are actually created that I really can only just begin to scratch the surface of. It turns out there's an entire team of astronomers whose sole job is to bring those Webb public release images to life. And that team consists of two people. Joe De Pasquale and Alisa Pagan are the two imaging visualization specialists at the Space Telescope Science Institute, and they were gracious enough to give us a master class in how they process different images. I've opened the FITS file, one of the filters, into FITS Liberator, and this is what you see straight from the telescope. So as you can see, it doesn't have spectacular color, and you can't even, even see a lot of detail. And that's because the dynamic range of these telescopes are so large, they're so sensitive, so there's lots of brightness values. And we have to do something called stretching in order to reveal these details near the dark end of this histogram here. So right now, it's in a linear scale, so just as it came out of the telescope but we can apply different functions to stretch the data in such a way that we're revealing more data, but we're not removing or clipping any data. So we can contain the black points and the white points. So as you can see here, we can start manipulating this and bring out more detail. This is really just for my knowledge so that I know which what I'm prescribing so I don't get all, get all messed up. So that's the, that's the beauty of Photoshop. Okay, so here we're gonna combine all of the filters together and this will be our first full color image here. And so I'm kind of doing it layer by layer and then we will get somewhere. Okay, so this is our initial full color image and it's, it's really beautiful on its own, but there's still things that we want we want to manipulate. So for me, this is where it becomes a little bit more subjective, even though we are following some like scientific principles and artistic principles in the sense that we do want to white balance the image and color correct it just like a photographer would. Um, but to me, this doesn't seem very natural. Uh, like having sort of these like really red dust and then this kind of teal gas, it just, it doesn't seem like something I would see in real life, I guess. Um, and that's where I start to shift the colors a little bit to sort of mimic more natural life. So I feel like these orangey rusty colors and this more blue color sort of translates better. And so I'm just kind of shifting the colors up the spectrum or down the spectrum and but I'm keeping and maintaining the chromatic order and the relationships maintain the same. Objective and it's really just a matter of bringing everything together and it's more of a personal choice at this point uh, since we've sort of addressed all the science behind it. And so I just, this is sort of the end stage where I kind of toned things down even a little bit more because it felt a little too yellow, um, a little too dramatic, and I wanted to feel more like more spacey, more ethereal, um, but also still have that and maintain that contrast between the two distinct regions. And yeah, that's how you, uh, that's how you process an image. That's amazing.